Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at three of these Lenovo M715Q, I think small form factor desktops that supposedly don't work. I bought three of them on eBay. Let's see if we can uh, fix them. First of all, sorry for the bad lighting and potentially bad audio. I'm trying to have a good setup to where you can see me and also see what's going on down here and also see what's on screen when we hopefully get these up and posted. So yeah, I think we basically just dive right in. I guess I could talk about, I bought these three on eBay for I think $175 for a lot of them. They're listed as not working, uh, but hopefully we can uh, fix that and, and maybe I've seen enough of uh, YouTube fixing videos that there's always a likelihood, there's, there's always a chance that one of these, at least one of these just works. So uh, I'm not banking on that, but uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. So we're going to, I have one working power supply for these. Um, so we're going to set up the first one here, plug in, oh, I need display port. We'll plug in display port here. Do you have a mouse and keyboard as well? We'll, uh, be positive here and go ahead and plug a mouse and keyboard in. See what happens. There's actually one that has a keyboard icon here. Just to be safe, I'm gonna plug this into that port. I don't think it matters. I don't know. All right, so we have display port. We have keyboard mouse just in case. Let's turn this guy on. Okay, so the fan is spinning up. Fan is still spinning. Not sure if you can hear it. Okay, so no display, just fans ramping up to max it sounds like and sitting there. We'll give this just a, a little bit. I don't think this would be like memory training or anything, but we'll just give it a second. No caps lock on the keyboard. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna call it. So we just get a fan spin, no post. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's posting at all. I should also mention at this point, I am not an expert at all when it comes to stuff like this. So if you're watching this, expecting that to be the case, you're in the wrong place. I'm just a hobbyist looking to have some fun. Okay, so that's number one. Let's see what number two does. Also, sorry if the camera shakes a little bit. I didn't think about the fact that my camera's on my table that may be shaking a little bit, so apologies. Like I said, I'm an amateur. I'm actually gonna mark this. Number one, so we don't forget. On to number two. Turn it on. Same thing so far. Fan is spinning up. Okay, so yeah, it seems like this one may be doing the same thing. Hmm. Yep, same thing, no caps lock on the keyboard, no post. So let's move on to number three. All right, number three, here we go. Got fan spin. And not a whole lot else. No caps lock. Okay, well, it seems like none of these want to post, which to be fair is what they were listed as on the eBay description. Um, let's crack this one open and see if there's anything noticeably obvious or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure these all include RAM and the CPU. I doubt all three of these have a dead CPU or something, and I think we'd get a postcode if it was a CPU error. Same with memory. You, you typically would get... Not always. I learned my lesson there. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, crack this thing open real quick. Move these cables out of the way. This is a... I think it's just one screw to take this panel off. I think 
there's just one screw I've seen. So I'm thinking this just slides off. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. This whole front panel comes off too. Okie dokie. So, it looks fairly clean. A little dusty. But not really. So it looks pretty clean. Um, let's... Maybe start with this. Can I just, oh, yeah. This little drive caddy here. Maybe we can take this out and get to the RAM, it looks like. What am I missing here? There we go. Okay, that's connected to Wi Fi adapter. I'm just going to take. I thought I had a pair of pliers. Okay, I have a little multi-tool that usually stays on my desk, but I took it to a video shoot for a video that may be out by now, may not be out by now, I'm not really sure. We're just gonna take this off so I can get this little Wi-Fi card out without having to pop off these little teeny tiny, little teeny tiny guys here. Hopefully you can see all this, okay? I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert when it comes to setting up this stuff, so. Okay, so this little hard drive caddy came out, but the, it looks to be maybe the, I guess maybe they used this as an antenna? I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, because this is Wi-Fi Bluetooth, I imagine, so I'm not sure what, or how this gets used exactly. Can you come out? I'm not sure what this little plastic piece here does. I took this Wi-Fi card out partly to get it out of the way, but also just because I've learned in the past that sometimes just unplugging devices, not having as many things plugged in, whether it's a USB device or whatever, is a, is a good thing when trying to troubleshoot, because sometimes, I, I mean, I've had USB devices plugged in and that's been the cause of something not posting before. So I think I'm gonna take the RAM out really quick. So we have two four gigabyte sticks. I think these are four gigabyte sticks of DDR4. Can't quite tell because there's too many stickers on here, but I think it's four gigabyte sticks. So we're gonna take these out and just see what it does. Hopefully we get some, uh, some beeping. Okay, so we're getting a postcode now at least, so that at least means that the motherboard might not be completely fried or something. Let's try just putting one of these back in. I don't know which one's the correct single slot to use, but we'll just try one. Let's see what happens. Okay, interesting. This is very similar actually what happened to my, oh, I forgot the, I forgot the CPU. It's not a J4125, it's a something. Um, little CPU I had, little HP motherboard I had um, that needed low power um, LP DDR3 memory. Um, and I was using the wrong RAM. And this is very similar to the, you know, to what I saw happen there. So I'm curious, I, I imagine this is the correct RAM be crazy to think that the RAM is bad. That didn't see very well. It's crazy to think that the RAM would be bad on all of these. So let me try this again. Different dim, different slot. Whoa, hey. Interesting. No media present, that's correct. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna plug this keyboard back in. I wonder if we can get to a, some kind of bio screen here. I'm just going to try some keys. I didn't see any pop up on the splash screen, so I'm just going to try delete and F12 here. 
Hope for the best. Okay, interesting. Okay, so we have system summary. AMD Ryzen 5 2400GE with Radeon Vega graphics. CPU core count, everything looks good there. We have four gigabytes of memory, so that's right. Um, let's... Okay, interesting. User can use Alt-P to power on if the USB keyboard is plugged into the right, correct USB port. So that's what that little keyboard um, icon was. I, I don't imagine this has anything to do with it, but I'm going to turn this off just to be safe. I, I wonder, I'm just going to do actually load optimized defaults OS optimized defaults some settings below are changed accordingly select enable new Windows 10 certification I'm gonna do, try to go load optimized defaults really quick because we may even try to I don't even know what I have available to boot from but we might try booting from Linux or something so let's hit F10 to save I don't know what I clicked delete in F12 so hopefully it's one of these two just gonna keep clicking these two. Looks like one of them was the boot menu. My guess is F12 was the boot menu. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna grab something really quick. I'll be right back. Wow, that was fast. It's almost like the magic of editing. I'm gonna plug this little flash drive in and see if we can boot from something. Just out of curiosity, let's reset this. Okay, so maybe it's actually delete that's the boot menu, I'm not sure. I was trying F12, nothing happened, and then yeah, so. Okay, cool, so let's try booting from, this is Ventoy actually. Verification failed. Okay, is, do we have secure boot enabled? I imagine secure boot would be disabled, but I didn't check now that I think about it, so. I'm really glad we at least got one of these booted. Doesn't seem like everything is working properly, but we'll get there. Secure boot, aha, disabled. I actually don't know what setup mode is. I don't I don't know much about secure boot, honestly. Interesting, so it seems like this BIOS is a kind of, I'm not sure if this is a specific BIOS that's on here or UEFI, I guess, or um, that's more for administrative like business something, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not an IT guy, so, but I don't know what this require POP is. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to delete all these passwords just to be safe. Okay, save changes, exit. Let's restart and see if we can boot into Linux off of this uh, Ventoy drive. Uh, I should have gone to the boot menu. That was my fault. Oh, it did it. <laughs> oh, no, I killed it. Okay, hold on. Hey, and it looks like we made it into Fintoy. Let's do, I think. I thought you could try, I guess maybe it's just Ubuntu. I thought you could try run Debian off of this, but, but hey, we, heck, we booted here. Now I'm gonna try to figure out what what was keeping this from booting. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn the power off. I'm gonna swap this dim for this one. So we at least know we have a working RAM slot here. Now why do you not wanna go in now? There we go. So let's try this, and if this doesn't work, then I'd say there's a good chance we know that that dim is bad. Interesting. Okay. So that is a no post there. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Okay, so bad RAM module and a known working slot. I think. Let's put this guy back in. Try it in the other slot. I probably should have pulled the power, but let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna be really sad if it doesn't boot at all. <laughs> there we go, okay. So it looks like, yeah, we have two good slots and one bad dim here. So 
I'm actually just going to make a little mark on this one so I remember. The good news is we know we have a working motherboard, CPU, and memory module. So we can do, that'll help with some testing. I was, I was nervous if it came down to like CPUs that I'd have to worry about swapping out CPUs with my wife's computer because she actually has the only AM4 system in this house. So she might have been irritated if I had to start popping CPUs in there. So, okay, possibly bad module, good module, good motherboard, good CPU, good, good everything else. So um, I think I'm going to leave this one disassembled and just put it off to the side for a bit and then um, come back to number, I guess, number two. So let me get that done and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so we're back. We have system number two here on the table and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We'll pop this guy open and just see what we're dealing with. Okay, it looks pretty similar, pretty clean. A little bit of dust maybe on the CPU fan. Let's go ahead and take this guy off. Oh, interesting. Interesting. We have different dims here than in that one. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna take this out again, just once again, so we don't have any extra stuff plugged in we don't need that could be causing issues. I'm just gonna leave that there. And I'm just gonna pop both of these out. And pop in our known good RAM module and see what we're left with. All right, so here's the one good RAM module. It doesn't seem like it has any issues posting necessarily with either slot. So granted it could be a bad memory slot, but I think I think we'll be fine. So this is system number two, known good memory. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if anything happens. Hmm. Nothing. That's a bummer. Okay. Um, granted, it could be the CPU. Um, it could also be the memory slot. Let's go ahead and just try. I think I'm going to try just doing a different memory slot really quick. All right, let's see if this does anything different for us. Come on. Nope. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. Okay, so... Could try swapping the CPU out. It could be a bad motherboard. Um, could be a bad BIOS chip, like a corrupted BIOS, that's possible. BIOS, BIOS, I'm not really sure. Could be something else, but if it's the motherboard, like a like a board level repair issue on the motherboard, I'm probably, probably stuck there, because um, I did get a hot air station, but that does not mean I know how to repair these things. So uh, I'm actually gonna pop system three. I'm gonna put this one back together really quick. I'm gonna pop system three on here and then see if uh, using good RAM, we can we can fix that up again. See if we get at least maybe two easy fixes. Because if all I have to do is buy a couple DIMMs to get this up and running, or to get two of these up and running, I'd say that is a big win overall. So far these have been really easy to work on though. I will give Lenovo that. It's one screw to open up the case, one screw to take off the hard drive caddy, to, to change RAM, two screws. That's not, that is not bad at all. Good job, Lenovo. Occasionally you do things well. Okay, so I think this may actually be, once again, a different, oh no, this is about, they look similar. Yeah, okay, so I think one and two have the same DIMMs, three had some different DIMMs. So once again, I'm just going to pop these open and see if we use known good memory, what happens. Let's just try to get a post here. Hmm. Come on. Well, nothing. I'm gonna try the second RAM slot just to be safe. Spin it back up. I don't think it's gonna do anything. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a bummer. So we have, so far, one working computer just with one seemingly bad RAM module. And then we have two that don't wanna post with working RAM. So I'm going to 
I think what I'm gonna do now, I may do some of it off camera or just sped up. I think I'm going to um, test all of our RAM in the known working system and just make sure and get like an inventory of what all RAM works. And then I think I might swap it, start swapping CPUs into the other motherboards just to make sure it's not a CPU issue. I don't think it would be. Um, I really don't want to do that because it's going to be a lot of work, but we'll give it a shot. So uh, yeah, I'm going to swap out, I'm going to test all of our RAM and see what we got. Hey, cool. So I actually put both DIMMs in from system one and it seems to be posting just fine. So uh, we at least have three modules that work at this point. So let's try out the RAM from system number two. We're back, we tried out the RAM from system two and now system, or system one and now system two. And um, this is system two pulled up. We see we have eight gigabytes of memory. So that's great. Um, that means it's actually, our RAM is, is working besides, seems to be this one DIMM. And I'll probably like off camera just triple check that this DIMM is actually bad, but that seems to be the case. So we have one working system. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna swap out CPUs now. <laughs> I don't wanna do that, but I think I'm gonna swap out CPUs now and um, make sure all of our CPUs work just to narrow things down. So I might do that on camera, I might do that off camera. We'll see. Okay, I'll for sure do this first one on camera. Okay, so to get the CPU out, it looks like we have this fan to start with, and then this looks like the heat sink in the socket here, so I imagine these two screws have to come out as well. So, okay, let's just get started with these big old fan screws. So far, I've been able to take everything apart in this system with very minimal screws and very mi minimal few screws, and all of them have been Phillips um, two head screws, which has been really great. And Lenovo doesn't do everything perfect all the time, but at least with this system, well, I guess I'm working on three that are dead, so maybe it's not the best system, but I don't think I can fault Lenovo for that at this point. But yeah, everything has been fairly easy to take apart and work on, so I love that. It makes my job so much easier. Okay, I think we can take this fan off. Okay, yeah, if I was really cleaning this, I'd take everything out and probably clean stuff, but really, okay, we have four screws on the socket. So I'm gonna take these off in a bit of a star pattern just to make sure tension is good. Okay, and this is gonna be our test bed, our test system, where we're gonna drop CPUs in. So, I should be able to, this thermal paste might be a bit crusty. I bet I can kind of leverage this heat pint. This should be all out of the socket. Let's see if I can kind of wiggle this a bit. Break some of that thermal paste up. Just don't want to yank the CPU. Is that actually something that can happen with AM4? Can the CPU come out of the socket on these? I know with AM3, that was like a big common thing. Okay. I think, yeah, there we go. Come on. Okay. Oh wow, this thermal paste is actually pretty new looking. Like, it's not bad. I wonder if, uh, seems like someone might have worked on this. It makes sense because there's aftermarket memory in there, so it makes sense that someone would work on this. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a bummer if they tossed in new memory and just didn't realize that one of their dims was, was busted. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get this. I forgot to get thermal paste stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with Isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna hit it with some. Try to rip this under the table so it's not so loud on mic. I'm a big fan of using coffee filters for uh, getting CPU thermal paste off. They're a little bit more porous, so I feel like they kind of catch on to a lot of the thermal paste. And um, they're fairly affordable. You can find them 
pretty cheap and you can also find ones that are made from like recycled materials pretty easily. And another cool perk is that you can use one of them, if you have these kind of flat kind, you can use one of them as a little like trash bin while you're working. I'm kind of doing a quick and dirty job here because I'm just swapping out CPUs to test them out. This won't be the final on, on any of these. I'll probably have to redo the thermal paste again when I actually finish up on this job. I say job like I'm a tech repair person. I'm just LARPing as a computer repair person. Seems like it'd be fun if I really knew what I was doing. Okay. Clean enough. I grabbed all this stuff to clean off thermal paste and forgot to actually grab thermal paste. So I'll be right back. Thank goodness for editing, right? Okay. So we should be able to pop this out. This is cool. I've never actually got to mess with a 2400G or a 2400GE, which is uh, what this is which I'm pretty sure is slightly lower clocked, maybe? I'm actually not sure. I looked into this a little bit ago, but it's been a while since I, I pulled this up, so. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side. This is our known good CPU. Some thermal paste on my fingies. Probably gonna do a quick and dirty job getting these CPUs out. I probably won't even worry about thermal paste on them very much. I'll probably just try to get them out and get them dropped into the system as quickly as I can. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time cleaning up this socket or the CPU, because I'm really just trying to test to see if this works. So I'm just going to be lazy, pick this up out of the socket, drop it in this socket, pinch it down, and then I'm probably just gonna put a tiny little bit of thermal paste on here. I'm not gonna run it like this. I'm just gonna see if it posts. If it posts, great, I know that, well, if it, if it doesn't post, then I know that the CPU is probably bad. Um, in which case I don't really care about the thermal paste. So uh, if it does post, then I know I have two good CPUs and something's up with this motherboard. I'm just gonna fling this back together really quick. That's it, I'm not even going to screw the fan back in. So I'm gonna be taking this back apart. I just made sure I put tension on the CPU. And let's see if this guy fires up. I don't know if, oh, my camera battery died. Hold on. Okay, my camera died. It's back up now, but this is interesting. Um, no post here. I wasn't expecting this, honestly. Um, I've rarely ever had CPUs die on me, so not what I was expecting. Um, not what I was expecting at all. So this is the good system. That CPU didn't post. So I'm going to keep that CPU in there right now. Stuff's starting to kind of get messy now. I'm gonna drop a good CPU in here. That's not the right way. I might double check on that one that I got the CPU socketed correctly, because maybe, maybe I didn't. These mounts are a little funky, so maybe I did something wrong, didn't get it socketed good. But what we'll do is we'll toss on this guy. So, known working CPU. We'll put some known working RAM in here and see if we can get this little guy to boot up. If so, then that pretty much means we've got a dead CPU. We've got known working CPU, known working RAM, and a non-known working motherboard. Let's see what we get. Bummer, okay. Um, something I didn't think to do 
is I think I might try clearing the CMOS. I'm gonna double check how I do that really quick. Give me just a second. Okay, so I think I put this jumper on these two pins. And then I wanna say I just hold the power button down. Oh, I don't know why I thought I had to hold the button down. Okay, so I believe that just cleared CMOS. Shut it back down. I can replace the CMOS battery too. I don't think that would be the problem, but we'll probably do a lot of things just to try to be sure. Put this back in the right spot. Let's try booting it up again. Okay, so this clearly wasn't just a dead CPU. Um, something's still up with this motherboard, it seems like. But I'm going to try to figure out why the other one with the unknown CPU didn't post because that seems odd so I'm gonna turn this guy back off so this has a known working CPU in it we'll just plug this back in I'm gonna try clearing CMOS on this one since I replaced the CPU just to make sure uh, oops okay so that didn't work this jumper bed. So I'm not getting a little clear CMOS speed. Oh my gosh. This is a mess. I'm gonna get rid of their little jumper and use a different one. I should be getting some beeps here. I'm not. So weird. So weird. Okay, not sure what that's about. This is the system that was working, which is strange. Okay, oh my gosh, I'm gonna put the CPU back in here and just make sure I get this working system posted because this is making me sad. Well, we're back. I did a few things off camera just because I didn't want this video to drag on way too long. So um, right now we have system number one, I believe. No, oh, this is system number two, apologies. Okay, so just a little refresher, system number three was the one that only had a bad stick of RAM. So the CPU was good, motherboard was good, one DIMM was good, and then all of our other memory we tested was good on the other systems. So on system one, I tried swapping the CPUs from system three and system one, so known good CPU into non-working board, and unknown CPU into working board, and neither of them posted. So it could be an issue with the CPU in number one, but it wasn't the only issue because the board wouldn't post with a good CPU. So uh, I also swapped the CPU from this board, which this is number two. Yeah, this is number two. I swapped the CPU from number two into number three and it booted that time. So system three and system two both had good CPUs. System one is questionable um, because it didn't post in the other system, but I don't want to just write it off yet. Um, and then this is system two, like I said. This also has now a known working good CPU in it and turns out the CPU in it was working anyway. So, not sure. I tried clearing CMOS on all these. I even replaced the CMOS battery here just for, for good measure and we're still not getting anything. So at this point, this machine seems like the best bet because I at least know we have a good CPU in there and I know we have a good stick of RAM, good CPU and good stick of RAM. But, uh, man, I'm not really sure at this point. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of things that could be on the motherboard. It could be a bad, um, it can be a bad, bad display port or anything because the fan would spin down once it posted to a different display. It could be a corrupted BIOS, which I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. It could be corrupted BIOS on here. I do have a BIOS chip reprogrammer that I actually bought a long time ago before I fixed that motherboard I was talking about previously. Um, I can't think of what it what it is. Um, so we could try reprogramming the BIOS chips on here with a like flash a new BIOS directly under the chip. I can mess around with that and I think I might give that a shot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give that a shot. This might wrap it up for this one though. So if so, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I hope Okay, so actually I'm back. Uh, I thought this was gonna be a part two, but um, doesn't really make sense, I don't think. But I did a lot of it off camera because I realized trying to do it in person, in real time was gonna be really hard, not having my mics positioned in the right spot. and I, I, I'm just not really set up for it. So I did some messing around, and this right here 
is system number two, the one that had a good CPU for sure, but not good something on the motherboard. And as I turn this on, you should hopefully see it post. It's gonna be really embarrassing if it doesn't. Uh, so what I did was I messed around. Yep, there we go. F1 to enter setup. Look at that. Look at that. So what I did was I actually used this guy right here. Um, this is a BIOS reprogramming tool. I'll have a link to it for it in the description and stuff. Uh, but basically, it's through a series of adapters. Right, here we go. Here we go. So basically, it's this guy, and then there's this 1.8 volt adapter, which is what the BIOS chip that's on here is. It's one. It's a 1.8 volt chip. Um, and so I was able to put this on and use this little clip to clip onto it. Um, so I clipped onto the BIOS chip and was able to like detect it using um, a program called Neo Programmer. And I tried, I, th I thought about pulling the BIOS from um, Lenovo's website, but rather than throwing on a, a binary file that I really didn't know if it was the right thing, um, I just decided to read and save the binary from the working BIOS chip. And then I flashed it to this BIOS chip and boom, we have working computer number two. So we, two and three both work. One does not work, but i um, not entirely sure why. So I am going to mess around with flashing the first computer as well. And then we'll have, maybe have to swap the CPU over to see, to see what happens there. But um, yeah, so number two is now working. It just has a fresh BIOS on there and yeah. Okay, well, I was not expecting this to work. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping in and jumping out. Uh, I went ahead and just gave it a shot and threw the, the working BIOS binary onto this guy, which is, I don't have my uh, top-down camera, oops. Um, but this is computer number one, the one that I didn't even know if the CPU worked, and boom, it works. So we have three working computers right now. The only thing we're missing is one stick of DDR4 um, SODIMM for the computer number three. Um, ironically, the only computer that doesn't work fully is the first one we got working. But so all three of them work. We just need um, to replace this busted DIM. And then I need two more power adapters because I only have one. But after that, we'll have three working computers. So I'm gonna look up, I'll probably throw on some numbers up here of how much it's gonna cost to order those parts. And then once I have them, yeah, I'll kind of figure out how much I ended up spending. And hopefully I'll be able to use these for some fun videos and maybe sell them and make a little bit of a profit. So yeah, I did not I did not expect that last one to work. I, I was I had some cautious optimism with the second computer. Um, and but yeah, was not expecting this one to work. So yay, that was a very pleasant surprise. And um, yeah, I think that is officially about it for this video because the only thing there is really left to do is go clean up all the thermal paste um, because I really need to, to do that. And then put these all back together and order some parts. So I was gonna ask for help, but I think I figured it out, which is, that's new, that's new on this channel. Usually I, I don't figure it out. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I guess I could say if you want to support the channel and make things like this more possible, because dropping $200 on computers that don't work is not the easiest and cheapest thing to do. So if you want to support the channel, um, you can, you know, give as little as a dollar a month on my Patreon to get some exclusives, some behind the scenes stuff and early access to my videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this far. I know it's been, it's probably dragged on for a bit. So thank you for watching dealing with the horrible lighting, and uh, stay curious, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!